Yeah, good morning, and uh, thanks very much for the opportunity to speak to you uh, today at your annual conference. Uh, can I just check that you can hear me okay? I'm, I'm, I'm used to standing in this corner, but 50% of the time the microphones don't seem to work, so just a little bit of check. Yeah, for those who don't know me, I'm Stephen Hedl. I'm a, a councillor from Orkney and Costa's Environment and Economy spokesperson, uh, which appropriately covers the theme of today's conference, local government's contribution to an inclusive and sustainable economy. And uh, before I continue, I'd like to thank the, the Cabinet Secretary for her contribution this morning. Uh, as a, a representative and champion of the local government, I might offer a slightly different perspective, but we we'll certainly share plenty of common ground on the theme of today's conference. So, by way of an, an overview of the issue, you don't need me to tell you that local government plays a, a crucial role in the Scottish economy. It's uh, thanks to, to many of you here today that it does. Uh, but as trailed, it's worth highlighting some figures from Slade's recently published indicator report. In 2018-19, million £555 million was invested by Scottish councils in economic development, a non statutory service. And to my reading, that's on a par with the combined budgets of the two soon-to-be-three enterprise agencies. Uh, 1,300 staff are employed in economic development, 15,000 businesses were supported, and 14,000 individuals assisted back into work in the, the last year alone. So it's clear that local government is a, a vital part of Scotland's economic development system. And this is despite the, the budgetary pressures caused by ring fencing and years of cuts visited upon local government that uh, you'll all be a, a aware of in your own work. Despite this, we've chosen to continue to prioritise this, this important work. And this is only a, a small aspect of the, the wider economic impact when we consider local government as an employer, a regenerator, a procurer and a strategic leader. In short, it's impossible to consider the future of Scotland's economy or how we can create an inclusive economy without considering local government's role. And this brings me uh, on to the other part of today's conference, a sustainable economy. Just what does the challenge of net zero mean to local government and the future of the Scottish economy more widely? It's a huge challenge uh, to, to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2045. We must transition to a carbon neutral economy in just over two decades. The interim target of a 75% reduction must be reached by 2030, only 10 years away. Uh, and add to this the immediate and long term uncertainties created by Brexit and the exponential challenge posed by responding to coronavirus, and the task seems both daunting and ill defined. But we must remember that uh, while this is a crucial stage, it's not the start of the journey. Since 1990, carbon emissions have fallen by over 40%, driven largely by changes in electricity generation. Now, this has presented its own challenges and opportunities for the economy. In my own authority of Orkney, we now generate 120% of our electricity needs from renewables. Low carbon and renewable energy generation across Scotland employs over 21,000 people and is worth £5.9 billion to the Scottish economy annually. But, I mean, clearly, this is just a start and if the target of net zero is to be achieved by 2045, we must all contribute to a continued decoupling of carbon from the economy. While electricity generation is uh, well on its way to be decarbonised, decarbonised, sorry, we haven't even scratched the surface in other sectors. Heat generation, for example, remains a, an obvious challenge. Decisions will need to be made in the future of the gas and electricity grid in the coming years, with all new heating systems to be low carbon sometime after that. Transport. It's currently the largest carbon emitter in Scotland, and therefore the sector which will uh, require the greatest reduction. A report by the UK Government Climate Change Committee recommended in July that to make the UK net zero target will require a 98% cut in emissions from surface transport. Scotland's target is even more ambitious, so the cuts will need to be made faster. So, while encouraging public transport and active travel can provide part of the solution, both the private and public sectors will still face uh, logistical challenges to the future delivery of goods and services, and the challenges will obviously uh, differ in rural and urban authorities. In the rural authorities, agriculture presents a particular issue for them. <laughs> that same report recommended a cut in consumption of beef, lamb and dairy to re reduce emissions. A 20% cut, uh, to be precise. And the knock-on effect this will have on farming communities will be profound, and if, uh, efforts will need to be made to mitigate the adverse impacts and diversify uh, income sources. Moving on, reform of the waste sector to deliver a circular economy will also be essential. <laughs> Improvements in recycling are a start, but the recent challenges of implementing the proposed ban on biodegradable landfill shows how far we still have to go. 
It might be too early to say exactly what a carbon neutral economy of the future will look like, but uh, given local government's essential role in delivery of all these services, uh, of, of all these sectors, it's clear we're going to be at the forefront of delivering the transition. An emerging picture from all this uh, is that the issues of achieving inclusive economic growth and net zero are inextricably linked. We cannot achieve one without the other. So rather than treating inclusive growth and environmental sustainability as separate priorities, we must address them as one issue of transition to an inclusive, sustainable economy. With a fantastic variety of speakers here today, I hope this conference is going to serve as a, a forum for some of the conversations which need to take place as we attempt to identify the best way forward with the time we have left to achieve this aim. Also mentioned the just transition. The, the uncomfortable truth is that if we are to prioritise the decoupling of carbon emissions from economic growth, it might not be possible to allow the Scottish economy to grow as it has done in past decades. Technological advances can provide yet uh, unidentified solutions, but in all likelihood the transition to an inclusive, sustainable economy will require sacrifices in traditional economic growth. And difficult questions will need to be asked about what constitutes good economic performance. Is GDP an appropriate measure? means well, measure for the measure in the economy uh, when we're trying to prioritise inclusiveness and sustainability. This may be a, a question for another day, but it's another issue that we, we obviously have to wrestle with. But a well-functioning economy is still vital to Scotland. Part of the challenge facing us all is how this transition is managed in a way which is just and fair. This is the essence of an inclusive economy. We may not see the growth that has been experienced in the past, but where growth does occur, it will need to be carefully managed to ensure that we address inequalities that exist in our society today and avoid creating new ones. And I say this because it's not the first time that the, the Scottish economy has faced transition, and it has to be said that the experiences of the past have not always been positive. For example, lessons need to be learned from the, the structural unemployment caused by the sudden closing of coal mines, steel production and shipyards. Decades later, uh, communities across swathes of the country are still experiencing the negative effects of this poorly managed transition. And it's no coincidence that many of the communities in the, the lowest deciles of the Scottish in, uh, Index of Multiple Deprivation are in the former mining areas or towns that were traditionally based around heavy engineering. Perhaps the, the Michelin example is a, a, a way that we can go forward more positively in, in the future. And more recently, failures to capitalise on the, the manufacturing opportunities in the renewable uh, energy sector, particularly wind energy, show the need for strategic thinking today. The thinking needs to be joined up. Conversations need to be happening between public sector, private sector and communities to understand the expectations and responsibilities each hold if we are to achieve the goal of an inclusive, sustainable economy. Coming to a just transition also gives us an opportunity to address existing inequalities. We should use the opportunities created by the transition in emerging carbon neutral industries to address poverty, unemployment and well-being. These same opportunities can also benefit wealth creating businesses to grow and provide jobs during the transition. Local government must position itself to capitalise on opportunities that a carbon neutral economy can present. So, Coming to the punchline, what does local government need to do? Well, there's, there's some industries which will be, uh, be more seriously affected than others. Oil and gas sector is one of the most obvious and high-profile examples, supporting many high-quality jobs, particularly in the northeast, but with supply chains uh, running across Scotland. It's also one of the, the worst contributors to carbon emissions, and likely, probably, necessarily, where the transition will be felt hardest. So this will need to be carefully managed to ensure it's done in an equitable way without repeating the mistakes of the past. And as previously mentioned, agriculture is also expected to face significant challenges as part of the transition to a low-carbon economy, with disproportionate impacts being felt in different parts of Scotland. And it's not hard to find more examples of regional challenges we'll face. In the case of electric vehicles, there's very real concerns that the rural communities may be left behind if future investment and support and infrastructure lags in, in their areas. And considering this place-based impacts, this is where local government is uniquely placed to enable a just transition. Climate change is a global emergency, with all sectors of society having responsibilities. But we are in the un unique position to develop and deliver local solutions to this global emergency, which are designed to suit our individual circumstances and solve the different challenges we each face. But I don't want to underestimate the, the political challenges here, though. We must provide clear and recent leadership that makes sense locally as well as nationally and globally, as populism feeds climate change denial. Local government and national government must be absolutely hand in glove here. 
The recently published interim report by the Just Transition Commission offers some early indication as to the steps we need to take. Embedding climate change in spending decisions, planning for inclusive low carbon infrastructure and ensuring fair work is promoted across our climate change programmes will make a start, but there will be no one size fits all solution. And it's too early to know what the solutions will be, but local flexibility in implementing policy will be key in, in mitigating regional disparities and ensuring that the transition is indeed both just and fair. So, to conclude, the task might be daunting, but we're well placed to initiate the change that's needed. I started the speech with some figures from the Slade Indicators report, the, uh, report. the £555 million invested in economic development, the 15,000 businesses supported, 40,000 individuals assisted back to work. This proves the influence local government economic development already has. Beyond the 1,300 staff employed directly in economic development, many thousands more work in council services that have a direct impact on Scotland's economy. This includes our colleagues working in areas such as planning, roads and transportation, licensing, education and many other areas. If we put climate change at the heart of economic policy, local government can deliver the just transition required to create an inclusive, sustainable economy for all of Scotland's communities. So, finish now. I thank you again for the invitation to speak to you today. There's, there's clearly challenges we must all face up to, but I hope you're going to find some encouragement and that today serves as a forum for the discussions to help identify the opportunities ahead in more detail. So thank you very much.